This is Planemaker Tutorial 29 and Blender Part 15. Notice we're deeper into Blender already than we were into Planemaker, and there's good reason for that. We notice the complexity involved in creating stuff in Blender. Now, in the last tutorial I showed you, I concentrated a little bit on this knob right here, and I showed you how you could have an animated texture mapped across this part here, where when it's a mouse clickable region in Planemaker in the 3D cockpit, it becomes a clickable region on this knob and you see it actually animated. I wanted to give you a little bit more insight into how that works and as I was preparing for this tutorial I realized that I actually didn't mention how this works when we were starting to customize the 2D cockpit. So I think now is a good time to go back a little bit and discover how all of this works. Okay so here in my ERJ140 folder we had one cockpit folder which I explained to you when we were customizing the cockpit instruments. Remember I told you that you needed to make a duplicate of the X-Plane resources folder under bitmaps and cockpit. For every instrument that you want to customize, you have to make a copy of that instrument's folder and put it into that cockpit folder under your aircraft's folder. Because the way X-Plane works is when it loads up your plane, it'll look first to see if there's any customized panels included with your airplane. And if it doesn't find any, then it goes to the default location under X-Plane's main folder in order to load up the default textures included with the simulator. So we had that cockpit thing. This is for the 2D cockpit and this is for the 3D cockpit. You need to make one separately for the 3D cockpit. This is really cool also because it's more flexible. You can independently adjust what you want in 3D and in 2D, although most of the time you'll find yourself copying whatever you customize for the 2D cockpit. You'll also drag that into the 3D cockpit. The other thing I failed to mention when we were talking about customizing 2D cockpits is how it actually works with animated textures. Let's take a look at this one instrument that we were looking at in our last tutorial where the knob was actually animated. But it doesn't have that round knob on it that was turning when we were clicking on it in the simulator. So what's going on here? Well, the reality is this is a two-part instrument. One part is static and one part is dynamic or animated. And those two parts work together, and you have to find both those parts if you want to customize stuff. So let's go to that directory under Resources, Bitmaps, Cockpit, and let's go to EFIS, where I know that these PNG files for those maps are. And we're looking for the button map zoom texture, and I found it right here. And this looks familiar from what we have in Planemaker, so that's fine. But what does the button map zoom dash one mean? Well, this here is the actual animated PNG file. If we look at this, we see that there's a series of positions that are presumably cycled through as you click on the textures mouse clickable regions. Okay, so say we want to customize these guys. I think I already did some customization on it because the one that I have in my folder looks slightly different than this. But let's drag these in and see what we can do with this. So I'll copy this, go back to my ERJ folder, go to Cockpit 3D, go to EFIS, and say paste right here and it's going to want to overwrite the one that I already have in there. That's fine. So now let's open this guy up in Photoshop and this is what I want to use now to create that texture for the knob. But just to test if customization actually really works, I'm going to paint it green. And now I'll save it. And now you'll notice how for the previous knob I had made, I took part of the texture, this part here, the circumference of it, I took it from this texture right here. I'm going to map this part just right around that button because it's an animated texture. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to unwrap it from view, project it from the view, and then I'm going to take this and wrap it right around where I know the button is going to end up being. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want this circumference also to be mouse clickable so that when I'm in 3D cockpit mode, my mouse doesn't have such a hard time aiming. I can actually use the perimeter of it. So let me just select one ring here by using the Alt Select feature. And I'm going to pull this in a little bit just so that we have a little more surface area to work with on that texture. Okay, so now this whole button is textured around this particular animated texture that we don't really see yet here. But let's see what the effect is in X-Plane. I have to save it and export it first. And now when we look at this panel in X-Plane, we see that this knob here is mouse clickable and the animated texture makes it totally look as if the knob itself is turning but it's only the texture that's surrounding the knob that is animated. Now you can do that as a trick to avoid having to do overly complex animations of knobs and stuff. And the point I wanted to make about making it easier to click on this whole thing, notice I can click on this whole thing, wherever that texture is wrapped around this knob, I can click and it will actually turn the knob. And also notice that this green thing here 
is something that I customized based on the texture that I copied from Xplane's resources folder into the folder of my own plane to actually match the design of my personal preference for this panel. Okay, so let's go back to Blender. I'm going to concentrate on the gear retract lever. So what I would find extremely useful right now in order to place the lever object in here is to actually put the center of this object right in the center of this notch simply by selecting these faces, hitting Shift S and saying snap cursor to selection, and then tab out of edit mode and say I want to shift that object's origin to the cursor location. Now I can start actually building the protruding lever there and I'm going to start it with a cylinder. We can fit this rod inside that slot and we stretch this object longer about like so. Now I'm going to snap the cursor to that selection and I'm going to start from side view to create the actual handle. It's like two cylinders and they've got sort of a corrugated texture on them. So let me go here and say I want it to be a cylinder. I'm going to offset it to one side here. And now I'm going to hit W again to use the bevel feature. Select these guys here and I want to extrude them and just resize them a little bit along this axis and then resize them along the x-axis. Let's see how it looks with set smooth. I'm going to add that edge split modifier. Okay, now I'm going to add a mirror modifier along the z-axis. So let me just widen them up a little bit. And then I can use this to sort of protrude out to meet somewhere in the middle here. I'm going to delete the uh, middle vertex here. I'm going to make this one smooth as well. I should probably apply this mirror modifier. And I also want to apply the edge split modifier. Then I can join these two together. And the characteristics of this are then kept. So let's go to side view and snap the cursor to the selection. And here I'm going to add an armature. What you see me editing here, that's a bone. And this bone is something that the script can recognize. Similar to objects, you can tab in and out of edit mode. And then I have to parent this one to that one while it's in pose mode. And how do I enter pose mode? I can either go in here and select pose mode, and then it lights up blue. Or I can simply hit control tab and that will toggle pose mode for me on that bone. Okay, so pose mode is the mode that allows me to animate this particular bone. So I select the object first, and then I select the bone with shift held down, and then I hit control P to parent. Now I have to switch to the animation window. To animate this handle, once you're sure that it's parented properly, making sure you're still in pose mode, in other words, making sure that this bone is blue, and making sure that you're on frame number one, Rotate the bone down to where you would like the position of the handle to be when the gear is down. And now, in order to assign a keyframe to this position, I just hit the I key. All I need is a keyframe on the rotation data. Now, why don't we see any animation curves here? The thing is, the mode of animation does not match the mode that this bone is in. So in order to match, we have to select this and say we want to be in pose mode. And here we see that there are animation tweens. So the export script works in such a way that really all it needs is to know the bottom position and the top position and it will automatically and smoothly interpolate between the two once whatever function this lever is supposed to perform is executed. So let's go to the next frame, frame 2, and move it up by 60 degrees. We'll now insert another keyframe, rotation again. And notice here you see the green one is the active one and that is the z-axis rotation. Okay, so these are the beginnings of our animation. The next couple of steps involve texturing this guy so that it's mouse clickable. And it's going to be this, uh, all you see here is really a hole. But remember how it worked with the knob. The knob didn't have much else to be seen here than a couple of numbers, but it ended up being that it had a separate texture that was an animated texture. So let me just go ahead and unwrap this. I'm not going to do anything fancy. All I'm interested in is to have mouse click regions. So I'm going to project from view, I'm going to resize it, drag it over here. All of this is mouse click region. So once we have this here, we can move on to the next step, which is to assign a data ref to this particular object. Now what the heck is a data ref? Okay, that is something we're going to have to cover in our next tutorial. So I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching. Please rate the video. Please sign up to my channel. And we'll see you in the next tutorial for data refs.